my friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to the Book Harvest Challenge. It's fall and it's harvest time. We're getting all sorts of wonderful things out of our garden and getting all cozy. And I decided to do a Book Harvest Challenge. What is a Book Harvest Challenge? Well, it's when you take a book that isn't so special, like the one you see here, this um, 1984 compilation book, hundreds of pages of just mostly text and some illustrations, and you take a couple pair of fussy cutting uh, scissors and a blade, and you harvest anything from that book that you can use in your creative world. That means images for collage, images for fussy cutting, and journals for tags and ephemera. Maybe images that you want to share with people in Happy Mail. It could be book pages. It could be words. It can be all sorts of things. It's basically a creative exercise in taking a book or a magazine or some other publication and looking at it with creative eyes and harvesting from that publication anything that you think would be valuable to you in your paper craft world. It's also a great way to challenge yourself to recycle things that aren't that special, that aren't precious. We can find these books, these types of books everywhere. We probably have them in our home. Our kids might have them from school. We might have textbooks or cookbooks or who knows what you have laying around that you decide, yeah, you know what? It's not really that special, but I wanna see what I can get out of it that can be made into something special. So tonight I'm gonna to take this book I'm cutting the pages out so I can stack them into an easier um, pile to tackle. And I'm just going to start sorting and cutting and fussy cutting. And then I will follow up and show you what I've harvested from this book. So here's my stack. I better get to work. Okay, so here's the results of that $1 book. Let's go through and see what I was able to dig up, and I'm going to show you a couple things that I do with it. Um, first of all, this was one evening's work. Now, I did sit a little bit longer than I usually do, but when I get going, I kind of think it's fun to pull apart the book and find little gems inside. So let's look what I have, and I'm going to run a tally so that we can see how many pieces of ephemera I can get, or how many like images or fussy cuts I can get out of that $1 book. So first I'll start with this stack here. So this stack would be like the colored pictures that I could fussy cut out. Now one of the things I really like about getting um, a book like that is that the book's the photographs, the illustrations are much smaller than they are in the real books. So a lot of the images that I fussy cut out are better sized for collages and happy mail than in the actual children's book where they're a lot bigger. So this is just a great variety of kind of funny and cute little images. I love this bear. Um, look at that. That came from this book. I love Frog and Toad for Happy Mail. I mean, look how cute that would look on a letter, right? And Curious George. I just think that Frog and Toad make the best letters, covers. Like, see what I mean? Where it's much smaller. Some of them are fun. Some of them are crazy. Look how funny that would be. I love that they, they're like multicultural, so you know, you can get a little bit of all sorts of things, animals and people. Look at this as buildings, like the top of a castle. And fun little images and joyful and colorful. So, and Peter Rabbit, those are always great on like journal pages and then for like holiday uh, tags and things. Really, really cute. So in that stack, let's see, I counted roughly 40 pieces. So <clears throat> let's say 40 in that first stack. Now this stack is bigger, colorful pieces. These would be like great for packages, 
um, bigger collages. This is from that book, I think, Frederick. Look at this cute little one. The little guy swimming in the water. You know, these are ones that can be backgrounds, interesting for tags. Look on a package, how bright and cheery would that be? Travel. And the Dr. Seuss are so colorful for like birthday project, birthday packages. Look at this one. You could write in here, put that in a journal and write something right there as journaling space. I love these yellow ones. They're so precious. And that's a great image. So these are like really kind of fun things that could be put on envelopes, on tags, on flips, backgrounds and journals, like just really great pieces. So let me count these and get a number. I have about 30 pieces here. It's about 30 pieces in that stack. Okay, now I wanna bring up something quirky. So these wouldn't be things that maybe you would normally be attracted to. Look at these crazy little faces. Look at this little guy. This is from BFG. That's so funny to me. A tree. Look at these guys. Those would be great for collages. Look at that. So there's was nine of those. And those wouldn't be images I would normally get, but they're black and white, they're graphic, and terrific for um, collages. All right, these guys just cracked me up. Look at these birds. Nope. Look at. Tell me that would not be fun on a letter or a package, a big envelope with the person's address in between. I love that too. There's another big one, three. Here's a, a large tree, four. I love these stacking nursery rhymes, five. And another big tree, that's six. So those big, tall, I would call them package embellishers. That's what I would use them for. And then I have this huge stack of just black and white fussy cuts, which I will speed up so you can see. They are everything from fun little sketches to uh, botanicals, um, to animals, you name it. You're gonna see such a variety in this book. Everything from comical dragons to an owl sitting in a tree with hummingbirds. There's botanicals, there's, you know, uh, sketches, there's spiritual images. Just really fun things um, to keep in a box and flip through when you're working on a project. Big, small, all the sizes are represented in this stack. This is one of my favorite images from, um, oh, it's from the bullfighting book. Uh, I can't think of an, the name of it right now, but this is usually a huge image. I always cut it out of the books when I find them, but it's usually huge. I love how small it is right here. And as we get through the rest of this pile, let me say that having black and white images and collage is really great because they have so much contrast and you can add color to them. You can splatter inks on them. You can color them in, color areas in with color pencils. Um, you can put gesso on them and add other materials on top of them. You, you know, they're just very versatile things to have kicking around. So now I'm going to quickly um, add up what's in this pile and grab, put that number on our tally sheet. Right, now these are more like page embellishments, you know, like you could put them at the top of a page or bottom of a page. 
um, to enhance something or on tags. They're more like, I'll call them ornaments more than they are like fussy cut pictures. Very graphic, very cute. They could really enhance a collage. Oops. Love the black and white nature of that one. I love that how this is like finger painting. This one just, I think, is just so sweet. Isn't that colorful? And then there's some Christmas. So we have here 29. Okay, so then there's words. I didn't go crazy on this book with words, but anything that had really big words that I might be able to steal for, um, or little phrases that I really liked, I clipped out. I'm just going to say there's a dozen here. Um, you can get a lot more, but I just, words weren't my goal last night. All right, the last little, st I have two more stacks. So this stack was more things I put aside for Halloween for a, like a Halloween um, collaging. So you can always get things for like certain holidays, which I also like too. Um, they might not have been that theme, but they, they fit that theme. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I had that raven from the other one, so put that in there. And then there's book pages. I have one more stack that's very special, but I'll do that in a minute. And these are just pages that I thought would be very good in a journal. I like the graphics, or I'm always a big fan of table of contents. Sometimes it's just um, plain paper, but it's nice and creamy and patinaed. Um, anything that I thought would be a good idea to put in a book, I love how that is printed. Then I save those um, for full page. Look at the, this is from the Tauntaun. Um, I save those for um, journal pages. Look at this. I love Murray Sendax's little bear illustrations. I think they're beautiful. And even I could further cut this down or use this as a, as a um, page, but I just love the graphics on that. Velveteen Rabbit. More of that black and white. I love the lion. It's a great little uh, poem. I'll, I'll grab poems. I, I am doing a little Red Riding Hood journal, so I grabbed that one. So these are all plain papers, but perfect in a good night moon. So I have 28 book pages in that little stack. Okay, here's a favorite little project of mine. I love making slides, little tiny slides using vintage photos, um, vintage illustrations from books. So I took this box that actually had like a, I don't know, like a beauty product in it, and I just sort of collaged it and made it cute. And then inside, I put all of my slide materials that I use. So I have already these die cut specimen slides and frames that I use for specimens and I have little pieces cut up so that if I you know if I have some time and I just don't feel like doing a big project I have all these slides ready to go right so I will take like let's let's take a couple let's take this this one and this one and a traditional slide and one of the Sam Pool slides. Let's see if there's any other one I want to choose. I think I have a, a just a regular square. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to grab my 
crusty hole punches. And I'm going to show you one of my most fun things that I do when I just want to let maybe put on some creative videos, watch some of the other YouTube people that create things. This is like such a fun project for me. So I took a bunch of little scraps and papers from that same book. And what I do is I try to look for like something like this where I can take a frame, right? And I can frame up a little image and see which one is the cutest little image that I want. Do I want the bears and the balloons? No, it won't be centered. I really like the elephants and the balloons, though. That's really cute. And I do like the flamingo with the penguins. The other thing I can do is just highlight one thing, like the penguins or the elephant or the camel. Look how cute that camel is all framed up. I mean, it's amazing the things that you can do. The hardest part is choosing what you're going to save. So I'll take a little fun little graphic like that, and then I'll take the slides and start placing them over what I think I want. Now, see, I love that little giraffe head and the balloons and the ostriches running. So what I have is I have envelopes for each kind of size of the slides so that when I'm making them I can just find them really easily. So this one will probably end up being one of these slides one day. So I'm going to cut it down so that it's ready to go when I'm ready to make it because that's like a whole other day. That <clears throat> And I'll cut it in a way that I know how I wanted it, which cuts some time off of the process. And I'll put that in a stack. Now this doesn't have much left. It has a little turtle with a balloon. So I can check and see what I want that turtle. Oops, it's cute. Not the cute test. So then I'm gonna go in and take one of my punches because then I can at least use him as a piece that I can um, put in a collage or in Happy Mail or something. So see how I'll do that? And there it is. So I just go through my stack and I use the slides to kind of help me decide what I want. Now here's a cute little house. Tell me that this little house behind a slide wouldn't be the cutest little thing in like a storybook journal. So what I'll do is I'll cut that down so that it's ready to go. And I will put that in the envelope that I use for these kind. So I'll make little stacks. This little kitten, just a cute black and white kitten. Would look really cute just like framed up like that or in a round like that so i will make him on the smaller side i actually won't cut him because more than that because what if i want to make him off center so i'll put him in one of the bigger ones because then i can always use him for something else now here's from the little house I cut up what I really wanted, but I really kind of liked that little, that little um, orange and red with the cars. See how cute that is framed up? So that's really cute. I can put it in a traditional slide. That's really cute. Really like that. And it's kind of gloomy, but then when you isolate it, it's really not. So I'm going to cut that down. I think I'd want white space on the end. How cute is that? 
and I just go through like that. Look at this is another one. This one has so much I could choose from. It's got little horses, right? It's got people. It's got cars. So look at you could make many things out of this. You could just do the horse right there and still have plenty right in here. Look how hard this one is to decide. I could do the buses with the people, which is cute. I could just do the people. I could do the horse. So when I have something like this that has a lot, I just keep it aside because maybe when I'm doing a journal, I'll know exactly what I want to do with that. So I just go through and pick things like, like here I knew it. this little car is what I want. I mean, really look how cute that is. So when I know what I want, I will cut it down so that it's easier for me to really make a whole bunch of these little things when the time is right. I'll add that to my little circle stack. Get rid of some of these scraps. Let me show you another example, like, like a little butterfly just on a page. That's an easy one for me. I can either be making that into a little thing like that, or I can just punch it so that it's, you know, and it, I probably would punch this because it's not just so exciting that I would want to keep it. So I will probably punch that so that I can use that as, you know, on an envelope for a collage. Let's get that lined up the way I want it. So it's a little circle. Here, there were so many little elements in here that I could do. Um, look at the little cat. Tell me that that isn't precious. Something like that, it's kind of funny. Queen Victoria, that's a roll doll. And I could either just cut out the face, which is probably what I will do since I can't get the words and the face. And just the face is funny. Um, let me see if I can find another little example of something. You know, look at these little kids. That could be highlighted. But then I found this page. Look at some of these pages. Ducks and oh, look at the piglet, right? So easy to frame up like Eeyore or look at this. How cute would this be with piglet? So cute. So those are so fun to cut up. But then I found pages like this, which look at all these little individual guys that could be framed up in just the cutest of ways. Look at this one. Really, how cute is that? And like something like this where I'm not a big fan of the picture, this house could be a slide. This little prairie dog could be a slide. Look at all of these little ones with the kittens. That can easily be, look at the little kittens there. Look how cute this would be, just to frame up some of those kittens. So you don't ever, I mean, there's so much here, you don't ever throw it away. Now, something like this I took because, all right, this isn't really anything I think I'd probably want to fussy cut, but I really like faces. I think they're really fun when it comes to um, putting them mail and things like that. So even just cutting out his face. And again, these are just fun little projects to do while you're watching TV or you're watching uh, other creative things. Look at, he's got a little paintbrush here. Maybe I'll fussy cut him out because he's painting. Okay, on this, you don't really see too much, right? 
I can always go in with my handy dandy heart punch. Even on a picture I don't like, as long as it's colorful. And all of a sudden, you have colorful hearts. So it's just a matter of this is another way to be creative. If you're in a slump and you're feeling like you're just not too jazzed to do something, cut apart one of your books. You know, I mean, start punching out people and colors and, and isolating them up for fun little elements in your journals. There's just so much you can do. And again, look at just colors here. And sometimes you even get surprises on the back, little faces. going to cut all of these up and then I will come back and let you know what the final tally was on artwork for my one dollar book. Also don't discount numbers, right? Numbers can be really great things to punch out and to have. So every page is a number so I'm not saying you should go through and punch out every number, but they do come in handy. I have smaller punches too. You know, for collage, they always come in handy. I like how there's like a little line on these. I'm having a hard time lining it up, so I'm going to go like this and go in from the side. This one's kind of hard to punch. It's just not an easy puncher, so I'm going to do it. One side has one number, one side has a number, another. So, you know, you can also go in and just punch some numbers if you want, you know, just to have some numbers that are nice and clean and in different fonts. And numbers also look cute in the heart punch as well. So we have the numbers. So here we are, a total of 291 pieces that I got out of that $1 book. I got fussy cuts, package trims, funny faces. I got book pages. I got slide material in that thick book can be reduced to essentially, this will go in my book page file, and then this will be put in a shoe box with all my fussy cuts. So I hope you found that valuable. I hope you will look at your books differently or books that are available to you differently. And now my challenge is this, find a book, either a book that you know you're gonna get a lot out of because it's beautiful, or a book that you don't think you'll get anything out of and then creatively see what you can get. Use your scissors, use your punches, use your dies. Just use your creativity to see what's inside of a book. And I'd love for you to post pictures, tag me on Instagram, make your own video. This is called the Book Harvest Challenge. I hope you'll take it, not just because it's fun to do, but it's also a really good creative challenge and something fun you can do while you're watching TV or, or watching other people make videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I hope you'll take the challenge and I hope to see you soon. Bye.